Thank you, Commissioner. Hopefully, uh, you guys don't mind me turning my back to you so I can face uh, more, more of my constituency. And, and thank you to the County Commission for giving me the opportunity to come and speak here tonight and to update everyone on, on what, what you've been hearing a lot about. You can read, read about the newspapers, you can read on your emails, and, and, uh, and, and I don't know where else, but you can hear about a lot of different things. And, and Representative Ramsey was kind enough to come down, too. We just left the Capitol. We're trying to wind up the session, which is good for everyone, especially you folks when we get back home. <laughs> but we're trying to wrap things up. And I want to talk very candidly and open with you so you understand the Senate Bill 458 issue and situation. We had a bill last week, Senate Bill 458, that passed out of the Senate. And this, the bill, the author of the bill is Senator, State Senator Eric Johnson, who's the president pro tem of the, of the, general, of the Senate. And Eric Johnson last year passed a, a companion bill called Senate Bill 10, which allowed vouch for vouchers for children with special needs, whether it's, it's physical or mental disabilities, that they can get a voucher, their parents can get a voucher and send them to a school of their choice, and the, and the money follows them to that school system. It was very popular, at, particularly with the Joseph Sam School here in Fayetteville. This year, Senator Johnson came back with another voucher bill, and this is Senate Bill 458. The bill calls for any, any student who's in a failing school system, whether they lose accreditation or it's a continually failing school system, it allows for students to apply for a voucher. And a, and, a, and a voucher of a scholarship, if you will, it's actually called a scholarship, is worth $4,500, which follows that student to whatever school system they would like to go to and whatever school system accepts them. The school system has to accept them. An amendment was added to that bill which changed that language that, that said the school system may accept them to the school system must accept them. That amendment is the problem. That amendment is why everyone is up in arms. I, I voted for the bill. I didn't vote for the amendment because we didn't vote on the amendment. And it's a, it's a, little, it's a little confusing. The amendment was added onto the bill and it was passed by unanimous consent, which means exactly what it sounds like, unanimous consent. There was no debate. We had no debate on the amendment. We had no, we had no argument. We had no, no debate whatsoever. The bill got out of, out of, the, out of the Senate. We were, we were led to believe by the author and by the other members who signed on to this amendment that the amendment gave the school systems, and, and many of this, I represent five counties, not just Fayette County, we represent five counties, and we were told by a lot of the school systems that the language in the bill said that the school system must accept these students based on space and availability. Many of, most, all the school systems I talked to said that language is fine, we don't have a problem with it. Well, after a couple of days, they obviously have a problem with it. And we realized that the language was, was there was enough ambiguity in the language that we needed to change the bill. So we did. We took all that language out. We stripped that, that amendment completely out of the bill in a House committee meeting yesterday afternoon. The problem is there were five days between the day we voted on the Senate bill and the day we were able to take the language out in the House committee, and that's when everyone got fired up. But what I, want to, what I want to make sure everyone understands is this is a process. This is a legislative process. That's why we have three branches of government. We don't pass perfect bills out of the Senate. Mr. Representative Ramsey and, and, and his colleagues don't pass perfect bills out of the House. We try to perfect them in committee on either side once they get to the other side. Once we pass a bill out of the Senate, it goes to the House. They work on it. If they make changes, it comes back to the Senate. We, we, we then vote on what their changes are. Then it goes to the governor. If the governor doesn't like it, he vetoes it. It's an extremely deliberative process by design. That's a good thing. We can't pass anything quickly. And I was speaking to a member of our local media today, not Cindy, not you, but I was speaking to a member of our local media on my way to the meeting, and he said, I want to apologize to you, I feel very badly, because I think we cast you, we, we cast you in, a, in a bad light. And I was not aware that this process could happen. I was not aware that an amendment could pass through the Senate by unanimous consent. And I, and I told the reporter, well, I appreciate you saying that. The thing I've got a problem with is the I was not aware part. Please call me. And I'm going to have a town hall meeting here on, on Saturday morning at 9.30 to discuss this issue, to give you all a little bit more information. If you're, you're welcome to come, invite your friends and family. I responded to no less than, I, I couldn't even tell you, 600 emails. I've been on the phone for 72 straight hours, I think, trying to, to help people understand this. The bottom line is Senate Bill 458, as it appears now in the House, there's no language in there which, which mandates that a school system must accept students from a system that fails. This was not a Clayton County bill. It was not a Fayette County bill. And to further that point, Senator John Douglas and I shared with Spalding County. He lives in, in Newton County, represents Henry County. He's been getting about as many phone calls as I have. 
And today, in a House committee, we added an amendment to an education bill which says under no circumstances does any school system, will any school system have to accept students from a failing school system. I, I know there's a lot of and it passed unanimously, we have no problems whatsoever, and it's going to move through the process, and so that's going to be in place as well. But I, I wanted to come and, and, and try and explain this to you and, and help people understand that this is a process, we're in the middle of the process, the language that is so offensive that got everyone upset has been completely removed from the bill, and it's not coming back. The governor received 6,000 phone calls yesterday, 6,000. I serve as governor's floor leader, and I had a meeting today with his chief of staff and, and many members of the staff. The good news is that everyone's paying attention to what's going on, and that's good for you, it's good for us, because that, that's how the process is supposed to work, and, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. The other thing I just want to end on real quick, and I'm going to let Representative Ramsey say a few words if you'd like, if, if, the, if the chairman uh, doesn't mind. The, the other thing I'd like to end on, I want to emphasize, I, I see a lot of familiar faces in the room. I grew up in Fayette County. We moved to Fayette County in 1976. I went to Brooks Elementary School. I'm a product of the Fayette County school system, as is Representative Ramsey. He's, he's a little bit younger than me, but I'm better looking. And <laughs> so I graduated from Fayette County school system. I, my mother retired from McIntosh High School. She wrote the alma mater at McIntosh High School. I went to Fayette County High School. She taught at McIntosh High School. We had a little family rivalry going. And I'm concerned about the Fayette County school system. I've got two young daughters who are going to go to public school here. I would never do anything to jeopardize the quality education that we have in the Fayette County school system. And I just want to underscore that and make sure you folks understand that. Please feel free to come to the town hall meeting we're going to have on Saturday morning at 930 and again, I consider it an honor and a privilege to represent you, and I appreciate all of you being out here tonight and being involved in the process. Thank you very much.